Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're very pleased to have our guest Shannon Hayden with us, who is the Sheboygan County Planning Director. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you, Adam. Shannon's going to talk about the non-motorized transportation pilot program that many of you may have read about or heard about that uh, Sheboygan County is going to be embarking on here soon. We're going to receive up to $25 million over four years. and. Shannon is going to be taking a very important leadership role in implementing that program. But before we get into that, Shannon, please set the stage by sharing a little bit about yourself and how long you've been the planning director for Sheboygan County. Sure. I've been with Sheboygan County for almost five years, which when I say that out loud, it seems strange. It does not seem like five years at all. Um, and been with the, I'm sorry. The, the department itself um, administers a number of programs. There's a total of 19 programs um, that we administer, one of them being recreational type facilities, such as the Old Plank Road Trail, the Inner Urban Trail, some of the boat landings, and the marsh, which is at the heart of um, everybody, well, most people in Sheboygan County, I think. Um, and so with that comes the $25 million. So just to take a step back, yeah. so with the county, five years, you started as our assistant planning director. And how long have you been the director? The director for about three and a half years. And in your department, I know most people recognize, well, you have the, the, uh, the planning you know, type responsibilities, but you also have real property listing in your areas. Very briefly, just what are some of the areas that you oversee? Sure. Real property listing, which uh, helps prepare the tax rolls so that the assessors can assess the values to your property. and get the taxes collected so government can work the way that we need to for the residents. We also administer the county shoreland floodplain zoning, so if you live um, on a waterfront property or near a river or a pond that's considered navigable, you will need to come see us for a permit. We administer the county sanitary ordinance, so if an individual is on a septic system for their wastewater treatment, then they will need to come and get, they'll have some dealings with us at some point in time. On top of that, uh, we have the planning. There's some specific types of plans that we are responsible for administering smart growth, which is more likely being referred to lately as comprehensive planning, outdoor rec and open space planning, farmland preservation planning. We administer um, the addressing system for um, enhanced 911. So we are uh, we issue addresses, and if somebody doesn't have their address in the rural area, Posted properly, the sheriff's department will notify us and get a letter from us saying make sure that's up um, correctly. And then we also do um, tie in a little bit into real property listing, but land records management, the geographic information systems mapping, the digital mapping, and it's all um, going out on the web now so people can look up information about their property there. And I think that's that's pretty big, broad overview of the types of things that we do. And quickly gives our viewers an appreciation for the, the breadth of responsibilities that you have there from, like, as you said, land records and making sure that property tax bills are uh, correctly dealt with from subdivision, reviewing subdivision ordinances to wastewater, what have you. So all of that going on and you get a call uh, but the fall, winter of uh, 05. August, yeah. August of 05, <laughs> I lose track of time. And uh, this phone call comes from Congressman Petri's office. And what do you, what do you learn? Um, well, Congressman Petri's staff member, Debbie Gebhardt, asked, would Sheboygan County be in a position to spend $5, $5 million of each, of each of five years for a total of $25 million on um, bike and pedestrian facilities? And, to be honest with you, at first I thought that I didn't really know what she was talking about. I thought maybe it was like a telemarketing call, trying to sell me something. And as I began talking to her a little bit more, and um, she explained what was happening in the transportation subcommittee and with this non-motorized pilot program, um, I realized that it was a real opportunity for us and started to explain how we might be in a position to implement it. And uh, she took that back to Congressman Petri, and he put it out there um, as one of four communities in the country to be um, a pilot community for non-motorized or bike ped type um, transportation. Because I want our viewers to appreciate that 
you have a, a lot going on in that department. It's one of our leaner departments and certainly lean when you compare it to other counties across the state. Uh, you do an excellent job applying for grants, whether it's for some of our bike trails, what have you. But this was a situation where we weren't lobbying for it, we weren't asking for it. And all of a sudden, pretty much out of the blue, landed this tremendous opportunity with, as you said, up to $25 million over a four-year period to improve our bike, biking, walking trails, what have you. Let's get right into it. Uh, for the viewers who haven't really been following this or wondering, well, what is this non-motorized transportation pilot program? How would you describe it? Um, it's a program to help change behavior. For those people who watch George Bush's uh, State of the Union, he said we're addicted to oil and we need to stop. That's one of the components of this um, program and the thinking of the Transportation Subcommittee, um, namely Congressman Oberstar, but this was a bipartisan effort between um, Congressman Oberstar out of Minnesota and um, Congressman Petri from, um, from this area. And um, they worked very closely together. I think it is a good example of some bipartisan leadership working together on a program um, to take cars off the road, I, to, you know, to be very straightforward. And when I say that, some people think that that's insane. Um, but it has happened and worked in other um, areas throughout the country. And more, less than 1% of our transportation budget is spent on non non-car related facilities, so not motorized facilities. Um, so, so when you look at it in the grand scheme of things, our, our spending typically on bike ped um, transportation options has been very, very limited. And I think that Congress, at least the Transportation Subcommittee, in light of our dependency on oil, the, um, the air pollution issues we're starting to deal with more and more frequently, and then also the costs of energy um, going up, starting to maybe rethink some of their spending and seeing if there's a way that we can kind of shift the way that we make transportation choices. Um, so if nothing else, to give people more options. Everyone's so inclined to jump in the car, whether it's taking their kids to school or going to work or going to the store, and if we have a better transportation system that facilitates jumping on your bike or walking in a safe manner that we're going to see more people make better lifestyle choices that are going to be healthier anyway. Right, right. So you, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, Sheboygan County, Wisconsin, one of four communities. What are the other three? Um, Marin County, California, which is a bay community right across the San Francisco Bay from um, the city of San Francisco, though the incorporated portion of San Francisco is not in their county. Um, it's a very unique place. Their median household price is $750,000. Um, it's relatively densely populated though and speaking to some of the um, leadership in that area, they have a lot of areas set aside for protection, especially along the um, Pacific Coast. So it's um, definitely a wealthy community with some aesthetic attractions to it. Minneapolis St. Paul, which many of us have visited at some point in our life, I'm sure, given its location in the Midwest, they have had a long history of um, commitment to bike pedestrian and then also with their light rail and public transit options there and I think um, they were selected just to continue some of the work and maybe do some additional um, connectivity between the St. Paul Minneapolis city itself and some of the suburban areas. Um, Columbia, Missouri is, has a population of about 90,000 so it's a little bit bigger than the city of Sheboygan but certainly you know not much bigger than the county itself but it does um, also include two universities, so they're a little bit unique as well. Um, so from the discussions that I've heard, when you take those four communities together, you really get a nice cross-section of the country as a whole. And um, from what we've been told, if this program can work in these four communities, the feeling is that um, taking this as, the, as a model for the next step in starting implementing across the country is, is likely to be successful. Now there's no question that Congressman Petri really deserves you know, tremendous credit for bringing this to Sheboygan County, but uh, the question's been posed, why Sheboygan County and how do you respond to that? Well I think that there's a, a lot of different things happening here. For example, I received a call from Dave Cook yesterday from Maywood 
and he said two years ago they had 50 people in, involved with this um, bicycle training program. Every Monday night in the summer, 50 people were leaving Maywood on Miller Road, which is a small rural road. This last year they had 100, so they doubled their program. And that's just one small example where you have a group of people choosing to bike for recreational purposes. We have a long-standing historical commitment, I think, to the trails with the old Plank Road Trail. It's a very visible one from Highway 23, and that came in place with a lot of vision and foresight by the planning department, which I wasn't part of at the time. But when 43 was developed and that interchange there, really trying to push for that, and that was successful. And then the, the commitment throughout the county, City of Plymouth has a good trail network as well as the City of Falls, City of Sheboygan. So I think that there's um, kind of this, people are, first of all, tourists are coming to Sheboygan to use these um, facilities and amenities that we have, but also the residents use them frequently to get to where they want to go, but also to recreate. I mean, there definitely is a recreation component, I think, um, to the thinking of having Congress and Petri choose us as a community. And I know you've mentioned not only the planning that's happened in the past, uh, some of the trails that we currently have in place, the interest from the community. But another point that you've made that I think is a very good one is that uh, a certain percentage of the population here, perhaps higher than some communities, live within, what, five or 15 minutes of the workplace? Can you right. clarify that? Sure. Um, based on the census data, 50% um, of the population in Sheboygan County commutes 15 minutes or less to work, which is um, significantly higher, almost double of what um, commuting rates in the nation. I want to say it's about 23 to 30 percent of people commute 15 minutes or less. So historically, even if you look at a map of Sheboygan County, you have a more dense urban core and then you have um, you know, your rural areas surrounding it. So people are really living pretty close to where they're working and if you're talking about a seven minute drive to work, let's say, when we say 15 minutes or less, that includes everybody who's, you know, driving a short trip, um, you know, seven minutes, for sure you can do that on a bike. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're coming from the city of Falls into Sheboygan or something, that certainly is doable. Um, but, so I think right there we have a leg up. And one of the things that is frequently discussed is mode split. Um, what section or what mode of transportation do people choose to um, take a trip? And um, when you look at some studies that have been done by the Federal Highway Administration, the um, mode split for bikes and walking in Sheboygan County is about 6%, where nationally it's about 2%. So we're already biking and walking at a higher rate than others throughout um, the country. Certainly, I want to say a place like Madison might have 10%. Mm -hmm. But um, that's where we're trying to head, I believe, with this program, is to try to increase the number of people who are choosing to bike or walk when it's practical for them to do so. Um, Very, good. Yeah. Very good. Final question before turning it over to Bill. So in a nutshell, what are the roles and responsibilities of the planning department? Sure to administer this program? Well, there's recently been some legislation uh, passed by the county board to make it kind of a, a joint effort between the planning department and the highway department, which I think is a logical solution. Um, the planning department will be working on some of the upfront, um, trying to get the citizen involvement, working with the committee structure, all of this, of course, being reviewed and approved by two county board um, supervisors committees, the resources and the transportation committee, um, they, they have final review and, and approval of anything that the staff is bringing to them. But coordinating the process, um, helping identify projects, things like that. Um, the highway department will certainly be important to be at the table through that entire process, but you know, one of their areas of expertise is when it comes to finding consultants to help with design and the contract letting and the whole grant um, fiscal administration, their accounting staff are able to deal with that because they do that every day. So um, making sure that the, the planning side, the touchy-feely stuff is kind of how I describe it gets done, but then um, the highway department will, will be responsible for the on-the-ground, you know, getting it done kinds of things too. So 
Excellent. Very good. In addition to the Resources Committee and the Transportation Committee, will there be any other county committees or departments that will provide any information, or will it primarily be those two committees? Well, you know, for sure the two are very key, but there have been other um, departments, just about every committee, everybody, this is a huge thing. A lot of people have wanted to be involved with it. Finance um, certainly wants to be involved from a um, fiscal management and oversight um, standpoint. We have had interest from our Health and Human Services um, Department from a health perspective. We focus a lot on transportation, but there is a health component to it as well. And um, some of the statistics that I've been hearing since we got this are pretty shocking. Um, for example, this generation of children is the first to have a shorter lifespan than their parents, the ones that are you know, considered school age now. Um, that's something that we haven't seen in, in quite a long time. Because of obesity or what's that? Obesity, and then with that comes um, the type 2 diabetes. Another um, statistic that I find kind of shocking is that if you can reduce, eliminate one case of diabetes, that's a savings of a million dollars over that person's mm -hmm. lifespan. That's huge, and if we can t start targeting children to change their behavior. I think everybody here remembers a time when it was perfectly normal, okay, and just part of the day. Your parents kicked you out and you didn't come back till the first street light was on. We don't do that anymore. Um, and we need to make opportunities where parents can feel that their kids are going to be safe so that they can not have to worry that they're going to get run over by a car or snatched from a ki by a kidnapper or something, but also that kids have the ability to get out and they don't think of it as a punishment to have to walk to school. It's just the way it is. Um, so there's a number of different models and programs out there that can help. And I anticipate health and human services at a minimum being at the table. But I know that from a research perspective, there's a number of um, different aspects of it that people are interested in. But ultimately, um, this joint committee is what I see the resources and transportation as having the final oversight um, you know, as we were going through that legislation, there was a healthy discussion on the county board floor, a good 45 minutes, um, about there, there were some county board supervisors who wanted all the projects to come before the county board for approval. That didn't get amended in this um, legislation, but perhaps that might come back. Um, but ultimately, I think that the two committees, the members on those um, committees take this very seriously and understand that it's a huge program and I think that they're going to make the best decisions for the residents of the county. The longer I've been involved in government, the more I feel that we really need to involve the grassroots citizens. Mm -hmm. How will we involve the citizens sure. in the planning? I have some of my own ideas um, and it, it's, it's never easy. I mean, to just post an agenda and say we're having a public hearing and well, geez, nobody showed up. That's, that's not the way to go about it. You have to get out to the community. Um, there's a number of different things that you can do, walking down the street, grabbing somebody, and I'm really grabbing them, but saying, hey, do you have a minute to talk to me about transportation, or how, would you have biked today, or whatever. There's a number of different um, inventories and user perception mod tools out there that you can use. Our consultant that hopefully will help us guide through this process initially. Um, I was talking to one who I think will at least be throwing their hat in the ring, um, but he said, you know, I've seen good public participation and I've seen bad. The good gets everybody in the room from, you know, crawling to elderly and gets them having input and I'm looking for some expertise to help with that. But I think that anybody who wants to have a say and maybe even some of those people who don't think they want to have a say, um, should have a say. And getting school kids involved, mm -hmm. uh, poster contests, things like that. Any way that we can get um, input from the public, I think is going to be important because this is too important of a program to not take that into account. How do you envision that project selection will occur? Sure. Um, well, last night the Joint Committee approved um, Roger and I and, and, and also Adam to move forward with developing a request for qualifications for a consultant and then subsequently in the future we'd come back to hire a consultant. Um, 
excuse me, there's a number of different consultants out there that have the ability to come up with a rating tool or have already come up with rating tools for projects. So the hope is that one component that the Federal Highway Administration is requiring us to, to do is update our existing bike and ped plan. Um, they're saying that's your first step. So our consultant will help us with that. The hope is that given the goals of the pilot program and some of the outcomes are still being worked on with a, a work group of the pilot communities, but once those are formalized, the consultant can take the plan and this rating and ranking tool that will be developed not just by the consultant but with input and guidance by the um, Citizens Advisory and Technical Committee, which the County Board created. Um, and then once that list is in place, rate all those potential projects. And from there, I'm not real sure. I'm going to be looking to guidance from the, the Citizens Advisory and Technical Committee and the Joint Committees to help tell me you know, how they want that to go. Um, so there will be a rating process. It's not going to be just a, oh, we think this is a good idea. Um, and projects will be scored. And, um, but the details of all that I haven't been worked out yet. Do you have any idea about how soon some projects might be selected? It probably will be an ongoing process. Sure. Yeah. Um, we had put together a staff, a, a tentative outline of how we want to move forward. The hope would be to have a list of projects um, by the end of summer, um, August, September time, because for any construction that's going to occur in 2007, we really need to get the design work started. We are going to need to go through an environmental assessment process as part of the federal grant that takes some time and effort. So I'm going to have to work out with the advisory committee and the joint committees as to do they want to just select 2007 projects and then kind of have a ghost list of 2008, 2009 projects. I'm not sure how that's all going to work out, but this is very in a very aggressive time period um, for the pilot. The, the money is not required to sunset at 2009. That's the funding period of the bill. But um, there definitely is a lot of expectation that the dollars are spent, um, but spent wisely. So um, I think we're going to have to continue to be aggressive, though thoughtful, but it's going to go fast um, and to, to meet the, the requirements of the program. We are required to report back to Congress in, I think, 2007 is the interim report, and then 2010 for the final report. So if we're only halfway done constructing, we're not going to have a very good report. So we're going to have to make sure that we move forward appropriately within the time frame um, that we need to. And there's a lot of people, even though we didn't necessarily um, lobby or you know try to persuade Congressman Petri to give us funding, um, we got lucky because at least two of the other um, four that I can speak of for sure. We're actively lobbying um, their congressmen for a good year to year and a half to be on that list of four. Two of the other four communities. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, maybe, all th maybe three of the four, but I know for sure two out of the four worked very, very hard to be on that short list. So, um, you know, there's kind of fell in our lap, but there are other communities out there that are saying, you know, this is, we got to get it done so that we can prove to Congress that this is important. So um, it's a big, it's a big uh, responsibility to, to shoulder, I think, but I think that we'll, we'll get through it good. Basically, then our reviewers could begin, or our viewers could begin to see some projects being built in 2007, mm -hmm. and then over the next couple of years, the money would kind of be allocated, but wouldn't all have to be spent in in one certain year, some might carry over. Right, right. The other thing that's important to mention is that there are, the dollars aren't just for bricks and mortar types of things. Um, education and outreach, one of the ones that you'll probably hear me refer to frequently is the Safe Routes to Schools program. Um, the pilot program, which actually happened in Marin County, I believe was a three-year pilot. It reduced vehicle traffic to schools by 13% each year. and. If you think about it in a taxpayer's perspective, that's less buses that you have to pay for. 
And so right there is a great incentive to get kids walking to school. So I think that's one program area that we may be able to look at implementing through this grant, which would be eligible. Um, but there are other things that can occur, such as intersection treatments, painting, things that slow people down. Um, and all of those things have to be looked at. And I would think some of those smaller projects are this, that's the buzzword is the low hanging fruit thing, which kind of makes me laugh. But um, you know, some of those are smaller and hopefully the right construction would start, the actual construction could start in 2007 and then carry out for the next couple of years. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let me recap. <laughs> uh, summer, fall of 05, we receive notification that we may re receive up to 25 million. Mm -hmm. That has since passed Congress, uh, been appropriated. We will receive up to $6.25 million a year for right. the next four years. Uh, we, the county board has established a joint oversight committee, the transportation and planning and resources committees. They've now combined nine members that will be overseeing it. They've established an advisory and technical committee that is yet to be assigned. We mm -hmm. have, I think, about 50 individuals so far mm -hmm. that have expressed interest in that. Uh, we have authorization to hire a consultant to help develop the criteria. We have uh, uh, authorization to uh, have a couple of staff assigned to your department to help with the program development and administration. And frankly, 06, you know, for those who are really chomping at the bit and just can't wait for this trail development and things to happen out there, really 2006 is going to be a year of gearing up, mm -hmm. preparing the criteria, uh, getting the projects um, selected, prioritized, design work done, and really 07 is when we're going to start seeing some projects go on the ground. I think that's the most realistic approach. I, I think thinking that construction will occur in 2006 would be very aggressive. So if people, and I know that you've put out news releases in the past, and mm -hmm. recently there was a nice editor, editorial in the Sheboygan Press about the program, the opportunity, and folks can contact you if they are interested. Our viewers who are watching this program, if they're interested in learning more, getting on a mailing list, or participating, what's the best way for them to follow up? Well, within the next couple of weeks, I hope to have um, our web staff to have a special site on the department's the county planning department's website that gives updates and all sorts of information and links about the program but in the short time until that happens because I, I have no idea what the workload in the information systems department is at this point um, if they they have any questions they certainly can give me a call um, our number is 459-3060 and um, you can look it up in the phone book if, if you didn't write it down. But certainly, I'd be more than happy to talk to anybody about the program. And so far, my experience has been that people who have called have all sorts of great ideas. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who have spent time on a bike seat um, throughout the county and have seen things that they can share with us and the advisory committees and all the other people who are going to be involved. So. Um, I'm always of the thinking of the more we can get, the better. Absolutely. We want to definitely want to err on the side of getting as much input and participation as we can. Shannon, thank you so much for joining us today. We covered a lot of ground in a short period of time. If you have additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact Ms. Hayden or a member of her staff, 459-3060. Right. Roger Lanning, our highway commissioner, also is going to be taking a lead role with Shannon, and they both are just tremendous and I know they're going to do a great job with this. So on behalf of Chairman Bill Gehring, the Sheboygan County Board, and myself, Adam Payne, thank you very much for joining us. And until next time, take care.